Hello everyone. Our group consists of Catherine, Lindsay, and me, Terry. We're going to discuss our group's view on the Amazon case study. Since its launch in 1995, Amazon.com has grown into a digital giant with over $280 billion in revenue and over 840,000 employees worldwide. The website started as a resource for purchasing books and has expanded to offer products and services unimaginable during its initial launch. Amazon.com operates in the e-commerce market. Amazon.com is an example of an oligopoly. As Amazon has its own brand value, the company is able to set their own prices for many other different brands based on the demand of certain goods and services. There are a few sellers that dominate the e-commerce industry. The case study mentioned how Amazon's strategic advantage is the same day and two day free shipping to its prime members. However, all deliveries were delayed as demand grew to be too much for them to handle at this time. In the short run, Walmart was able to capitalize on some of these sales, making this an undifferentiated oligopoly. Now on to Lindsay to talk about which forces are most important to Amazon's operational market. To continue to operate and remain a leader in the e-commerce industry, two of the five forces by Porter that are important in the market Amazon operates is the power of the buyer and industry rivalry. For the power of the buyer, there are two specific areas we feel apply to them. First, buyer concentration. Buyers are able to shift purchasing from traditional retailers to forcing companies to sell their products online. Second, price value of substitute products or service. Amazon provides a service to their customers. Being a buyer of products and a seller of service, this allows them to command lower prices from its vendors. Customers, on the other hand, drive products to be at a lower cost because with the internet, they can compare prices. This allows them to force Amazon to sell goods at a lower price. For industry rivalry, there are three specific areas we feel apply to them. First, price and service of competition lower prices than the competitors, and they offer free two-day shipping with Amazon Prime membership. Second, degree of differentiation. They created systems that allow customers to make suggestions for purchases based on their previous purchases, and in the retail market, they released an e-reader called the Kindle and Tablet, called the Fire that was significantly lower and different from Apple's products. Third, timing of decisions. In 2002, they invested heavily in AWS to provide computing services, and then they launched Amazon Prime that when they increased the membership, they actually did not lose customers, but they increased. Thanks, Terry and Lindsay, for giving us the overview of Amazon's market structure and competitive advantages. If Amazon wants to sustain profits in the markets and maintain its competitive advantages, there are a couple of strategies that Amazon can implement by using Porter's five forces. First, shift the threat of entry by identifying and adopting new technologies in the area of procurement supply chain management. It raises the bar for new competitors to enter the market. Secondly, from supplier side, Amazon's supplier base is quite large and for all kinds of product categories. Amazon can gradually reduce the dependence on suppliers by improving its inventory and distribution management, building in-house capabilities on certain types of Amazon products. On the buyer side, by continuing to improve product safety and quality to its customers and building long-term customer loyalty, Amazon can increase customer switching costs. Furthermore, investing in research and development and continuous innovation will enable Amazon to proactively decrease the threat of substitution and create differentiated customer experiences to stand out from other existing competitors. Above is our group analysis on Amazon. Thanks everyone for watching. Please feel free to comment what are your thoughts on our analysis.